After doing more research on paleo media, especially in recent times, I've come to realize that it's actually a pretty versatile area of media. Dinosaurs are explored in several different genres and subgenres, whether they're featured in movies, video games, books, and so on. But there is something about all of these works and projects from these several genres and area of media regarding dinosaurs that have something in common. And it's the constant want of incorporating the king of the dinosaurs himself, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, into their projects. T-Rex is the most popular dinosaur in the the world, both in science and in fiction, as its name has been and will continue to be carried and plastered on multiple dinosaur-related projects due to how popular it is. From the early days of film and literature to now, the Tyrannosaurus Rex has been the most featured dinosaur in media, which has sparked a lot of discussion and discourse from the community. While some don't seem to mind that this dinosaur is represented a lot, others don't feel the same way and think the T-Rex is overrated. Personally for me, even though I don't mind nearly as much as the latter when it comes to how much T-Rex has been represented in media, I don't fully disagree with their arguments either. But aside from that, I want to talk about something that I've always wondered about the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Why? Why out of all dinosaurs was this the one selected to essentially be the frontman of all dinosaurs in the world? Why was the T-Rex selected to be the most famous dinosaur in Hollywood, in books, and video games, and even documentaries? Well, not surprisingly, our story starts in the early 1900s. In 1902, the first ever T-Rex skeleton was discovered by American paleontologist Barnum Brown. Well, technically it was a friend of his who had been hunting elk around the badlands of Montana, and while he was doing this, he had stumbled upon some interesting looking fossils that he would tell his scientist friend about. Brown would make the trip and eventually found them, much to his excitement. This discovery was unlike anything he had seen before, as this carnivore was thought to have been bigger than any of the ones that had been already discovered at this point in time and place. One of the guesses that had been attributed to the T-Rex's popularity is its American heritage, since it was, at the time, the largest theropod ever discovered in this country. At least, that I could find. Brown would report back to his boss, Henry Fairfield Osborne, the curator of the American Museum of Natural History, about the find along with sending him some fragments as well, and after a few years, they would finally give this dinosaur a name. Due to its size and carnivory, they wanted to come up with a name that really embodied the apex predator status for this find, one that was simple yet memorable. Hours were apparently spent trying to come up with a name that could work until Osborne finally came up with Tyrannosaurus Rex, the Tyrant Lizard King. In that same year, the newly named T-Rex would be revealed where it would be welcomed right away with open arms as it would shock and awe the general public. Immediately, people would see it as the most formidable and frightening predator that ever walked the Earth. It would also be the reason why it is one of, if not the most researched dinosaur of all time. Even in paleontology, where scientists dedicate most of their lives to study thousands upon thousands of different species of dinosaurs and prehistoric animals, T-Rex still manages to take the lead in research as it's been involved in many infamous and popular scientific debates, ideas, theories, and controversies. Some of these include whether or not T-Rex had feathers, whether it was a hunter or a scavenger, whether it was truly the strongest and deadliest dinosaur that media had depicted it as, and so on. And with big names from the science community partaking and even coming up with these ideas, it would contribute to the dinosaur's popularity. But in a video that's focused on the T-Rex and media, why is the science of it important? Well, it's because the science does manage to find its way into media, which has been one of the many reasons why T-Rex has had several different looks throughout its history and pop culture. And these looks have continued to increase its popularity, maybe not so much in films, but in other areas of media, especially documentaries. One of the first depictions of the T-Rex came in the form of artwork created by famed paleo artist Charles R. Knight, who was very much respected and known within the paleontology community. And his depiction of T-Rex featured a giant fearless reptile going against other dinosaurs, showing it to have been very strong and active. This was a very crucial aspect to what led to the T-Rex's popularity because Knight's work was so influential, he would be considered one of, if not the best popularizers of prehistoric life during his time. And the thing about Knight is that he would always do his best to depict his artwork around dinosaurs and other means of prehistoric life as accurately as possible, based on whatever information they had at their disposal during the time that they were making the artwork. So when he depicted the T-Rex as a giant, fearless, almost lizard-like animal, which was what scientists thought the T-Rex looked like at that point in time, people accepted that look and as a result, it would stick with the T-Rex for the rest of its life. 
Around the same time in the early 1900s, silent films were gaining popularity as well, and with dinosaurs already being incorporated in this area of media, it would only be inevitable that the Rex would be included in films like The Ghosts of Slumber Mountain and 1925's The Lost World, both of which were made by the man that would greatly contribute to the fame and popularity of dinosaurs in early film, Willis O'Brien. And both of these films did extremely well, which not only spread the name of dinosaurs in general, but specifically helped T-Rex get more into the spotlight. This would contribute to the start of the science fiction genre, which heavily included dinosaurs as they were the perfect candidate for it. Because dinosaurs were mysterious animals, given the limited information on them, there were less barriers of reality to follow, and people were able to experiment with dinosaurs more freely in this genre, presenting strange yet fascinating science fiction stories. And you can probably already guess what dinosaur was at the forefront of all of these projects. And on top of that, in 1933, one of the most famous monster movies would make its debut, King Kong. Even though T-Rex's role in that movie was minimal compared to the real star of the show, Kong himself, the influence it had was still great. King Kong was depicted as a strong and powerful animal that ruled Skull Island, so pitting the Rex against him showed us as the audience that the T-Rex was an equal to Kong in terms of size and strength. Then he would go off and die, but he tried his best. Regardless of that, what matters about this is with King Kong's $5.3 million success this further helped the T-Rex's popularity. What it also showed was that the T-Rex was profitable. So small or large, the T-Rex would be used in many different movies, shows, documentaries, often being showcased as the main dinosaurs of said programs. And even though dinosaurs would take a bit of a backseat around the mid-1900s and would instead be replaced by other science fiction things like giant monsters and aliens, a lot of the dinosaur stuff that came out around that time still included T-Rex in one way or another. Dinosaurs would eventually make it back to the public's eye later on. From the 70s to early 90s, there were plenty of dinosaur projects that captured the eyes of many by once again featuring the king of all dinosaurs, T-Rex itself. And while some of these works were hit or miss, others did leave more of an impact for people. The rise of video games would save a spot for dinosaurs, dinosaur literature would continue to make its rounds and offer unique and strange stories, and of course dinosaur movies were making a comeback. A lot, not all, but a lot of these projects were hugely involving the T-Rex because of its great track record in gaining attention and profit. But its biggest feature was yet to come. As the 90s rolled out, so did Jurassic Park, the movie that would start the most popular dinosaur franchise to date. This movie would bring T-Rex under a completely different style, one that was brought to life using technology that was very new for the time. With the T-Rex being in a very successful summer blockbuster film directed by Steven Spielberg, a huge Hollywood name, it's no surprise that the attention for this dinosaur would continue. Along with that, this tech was being used in other areas of paleomedia that featured the Tyrant Lizard King. And these pieces of paleomedia that were using this tech were catering to a different audience. Ones that were probably more scientifically inclined and looking for a slightly realistic T-Rex, at least one that was more realistic than Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park did something rather unique with the T-Rex though. Spielberg and his team managed to depict the T-Rex in a way that felt more animalistic and natural while simultaneously keeping some of the movie monster elements that people were used to seeing in earlier stuff. The Jurassic franchise would continue along with other popular works in paleomedia that use the Tyrannosaurus as the star of their show, movie, documentaries, etc. Even now, popular works like Jurassic World Dominion, Primal, and Prehistoric Planet continue to showcase the T-Rex even if they've done a better job at giving other dinosaurs some spotlight as well. In case you couldn't tell already, the early days of dinosaurs in pop culture would start a constant cycle for the T-Rex, one that has continued for decades and decades and will most likely continue in the future. So to fully answer the question, based on everything we've looked at, all of these reasons for the Rex's popularity and overrepresentation in media contributes to a few main points. These reasons, including the T-Rex's discovery being a massive accomplishment in paleontology, influential figures advocating it as this large, scary, and deadly predator through their works, it possibly being a nationalistic symbol for the people of its country of origin, it being discovered around the same time film was being popularized, giving the T-Rex the perfect opportunity to consistently gain roles in popular science fiction Hollywood movies, and it being the forefront of paleontological studies, research, debates, theories, and controversies. 
They have all not only inadvertently established that the involvement of the T-Rex in pretty much anything will guarantee attention, profit, and overall success, which is why you see it everywhere from kids shows to novels to video games to toys to horrible B-movies and everything in between, which in turn continues to spread its name, but also makes its name in nature so common that it also establishes the idea that it's easier to use T-Rex than any other dinosaurs when working on something involving them. A lot of the basic information about it is now pretty much common knowledge even to the general public making it easy for any person to use. Call it laziness, call it efficiency, but it's the truth. A lot of people just don't like putting in the extra effort in showcasing other dinosaurs, especially when there's one that's already so familiar to people. But it's also possible that there are people out there that truly love this dinosaur for what it is and include it in their project, not necessarily because it's easy to base a project on or to gain profit off of. Or also because the dinosaur itself is constantly being studied and new things are being discovered about it all the time, leading to some wanting to document its progress and changes through means of books, papers, and documentaries. This all continues the cycle that has been started in the early days of dinosaurs and pop culture. With the T-Rex being the star of the show, it's enabled all of these ideas, leading people to put it on this high pedestal as not just the king of dinosaurs in real life, but also the king of dinosaurs in pop culture. And that cycle has made its way from then all the way to now. And of course, this has been the subject of several debates with people arguing against the overusage of T-Rex, especially in modern paleomedia since there are so many other species that could be covered in its place, both in science and in fiction. And even though more effort could be made to get this done, compared to how paleomedia was back in the day, it seems that more dinosaurs are getting the spotlight they deserve, which is a step in the right direction. Of course, this doesn't mean that T-Rex's reign has to come to an end. There could always be ways to involve it in future projects with it stealing the spotlight for other dinosaurs. After all, it will always remain a fan favorite.